so into that. Today we're going to be doing a small video on basic embroidery. This doesn't matter what kind of machine you have, this is strictly basic embroidery to get you started, so hopefully you'll be successful with your first project. So, the first thing we're going to do is you're going to prepare your fabric. So, um, I've kind of prepared stuff ahead of time. So what you would do, and these are kind of my findings after several years of doing this. You would take your fabric and um, you would cut it to the size you want. Make sure that it's going to be one inch all the way around, bigger than your hoop. So this is the hoop I'm going to use today. It's a 150, uh, 120 by 120. And it measured 7 by 8 on the outside, which I measured it. So I just cut a 10 by 10 piece, because you can see it's going to fit on here with my inch all the way around. So to prepare your fabric, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to starch it. And I have found that what you're going to do is you're going to spray this side, you're going to flip it over, and you're going to iron this side. That brings the starch up through your fabric instead of just drying it. And then you're going to take and starch the side you just pressed, flip it back over, and you're going to press this side. And that's going to give you a really nice starch piece of fabric. Then we're going to take the stabilizer we want to use. And so we're going to kind of hoop for two different things. So let's pretend we've got like a 24,000 stitch uh, project. So um, the stabilizers I like to use is um, a cutaway medium by um, Floriani. I've tried other stabilizers. I've just found that these work the best for me. Um, some people find there's other ones that work best for them, and, and that's great. So use what you think is the best, but I have found this works the best of everything I've tried. So you're going to cut a piece approximately the same size as your fabric. You'll notice on this it's got a smooth side and a shiny side. So the shiny side is the side you're going to press on the fabric. And then because we have so many stitches, we're also going to use um, this here. This is called Dream Weave Ultra. Remember the Ultra, that's the important part of it, because um, this is a stabilizer that um, it's when you do it, it's smooth on one side. It's kind of really flimsy, but it really holds like 10,000 stitches. The other side is really bumpy, so you're going to fuse that part to your fabric. So we're, what we're going to do then is we're going to we're gonna have our fabric down. We're going to, our, and our Ultra, uh, Dreamweave Ultra always goes on first. So we take the back side of our fabric, we're going to lay it down there. This kind of, and you always want to do a medium heat, and you want to use a pressing cloth. And I don't have a pressing cloth, so I just take leftover fabric and just use it. So you would take that, you would put this in on top of that, and then you would take your iron, and you would just press it down. Hold it for three seconds, pick it up, press it three seconds, pick it up, and you're going to do that, and then you just would take and move your, move it, and you're going to do that for the whole thing until it's pressed on there. And then... You're going to take your um, cutaway medium fusible, and you put that on top of the um, the piece you just did with the dream weave. And once again, you're going to take your pressing cloth, put it on a medium heat, just like you did, and just and press it also until so, so you get the whole thing done. Okay, so then when you get that done, we're going to have a piece in that looks like this. So now to hoop this, oh, another reason we do this too, just which really, if once I found out about it, it made sense. When you take a, your fabric and you just take a, so let's take the fabric here and we'll just take a, so we, we take our fabric and we just lay this down, put this on top of it, but we'll say this wasn't fusible, lay this on top and we hoop it, there's, our fabric is still can stretch and just distort when you're embroidering. By putting the fusible on there, that, that helps stabilize your fabric. It's not going to stretch, which will avoid a lot of your puckers. So to hoop this then, and all hoops are and all hoops are generically the same as far as the way they're made. So I'll put this here so you can kind of see this. Okay, so on your hoop, you're going to notice you're going to have a, a little mark here at the top and a mark here and here. Now the center of your hoop then is going to be between these two pieces things and these two. So your center of your hoops can be kind of like right right here, not up here. That's one thing important really to remember when you're centering something. Don't pay attention to anything except these marks. They will get you your center. So let's say we want to, um, so what I do is I use a chalk liner to mark my center. 
So if I have something I really want and for size to place, I just take my fabric and I, after I've got my stabilizer on it, because it's totally flexible, and I quarter it. Okay, so now I have my, my center part. So I take my little chalk wire. This takes this brushes away with a toothbrush or your hand or whatever. So now we have an X here. Okay. So then we take our hoop. Okay, we kind of lay this in here. Then we just lay this on top. All right, so now we're kind of looking here. See, here's our lines. And they, they lined did pretty good the first time here. This needs to come over just a hair here because this wasn't until they lined up. So there. So we're lined up here. These two are lined up. And these two are lined up. So then we just take and we just put our hoop on. And I usually hold down with one hand while I'm putting it on. Otherwise it's going to pop out on you. And then when it's in there securely, it, most tubes have a screw. Just take and tighten that screw down. And we're ready to embroider. So um, then you would just take it to your machine. Stick it on. Now my machine's already set to embroider. Like I said, we're not going over uh, machine. But I will kind of tell you this. As you can see here, when I put the needle down, this is not in the center of my design where I want it. So on this machine, we can come over here. Oh, raise the needle. Okay, there we go. And we can take, okay, and we can take this little thing right here. Oh, it's not wanting to take my hoop. Let me take this one. There we go. Okay, so then we come here. Make sure the hoop clicks into place. Okay, we'll try it one more time here. All right. Oh, okay. Oh, I've got something in the wrong hoop here. I'm sorry. I go 150. I use it at home most of the time, the 150. So I'm going to go back to the beginning again. So um, most of your machines come with the, one, uh, with the 120 and then I think a 360 by 260. So um, what you want it, I have found I usually move, use, um, the hoop I use the most is the 150 by 150. So that was part of my problem here. Okay. So I'm going to change my hoop here to a 120, right there, make it go. And another thing to remember when you're doing this, you want to use the smallest hoop possible. So if I was home, because I have an 80 by 80 hoop, um, I would be using that for this small design. So now we're ready to go, we're going to put our fabric in, and we're going to now hit our little button here. Yay, I like this today. So we're going to come over to here. This is called design positioning. So we hit the center button right here. And it takes us to the center, which is there. So our center, you can see by putting the needle down, we're off just a hair here. So what we're going to do, we're going to raise our needle up. And we're going to take this and we're going to move it over just a hair like this. Oops, went too far. Okay, we're going to come down. Okay, let's see where we're at here. Up just a hair. Okay, we are good. We hit OK. And we're ready to sew. This now will be in the center of our design. If you have a, um, a lot of machines don't have this positioning, so you would have to, if you're not happy with it, take it back out of the hoop and, and reposition it again. So, and I have found, just so you know, um, I turn the automatic cutter off on my machines because I find I get better embroidery with it that way. So then we're ready to go. We hit Start Stop. It's going to tell me to cut my thread. Okay. And this tells us it's going to take one minute for us to do this design. That's what's kind of cool about this machine, too. This is your stitches that it's using. And then this is your color. If we had several colors, our colors would be showing up here. And see, it wants us to change the color, but I'm going to do it all the same. So I'll just hit my start button again. Because I said we don't have to because we didn't to pull it out. And technically this is an applique. That's why it's kind of doing the extra stitching that it's doing. And I just wanted something simple that I can show you. Okay. 
one more time because it's an applique essentially. Pair of thread. on the back. So this stabilizer now will peel off. Find it like this. And this is a cutaway. So you just kind of pull it. It all comes loose here. So you get rid of your bolt. Okay. And then I just use, to start with, I take regular scissors. And I cut the major part of it away. Okay. Then to get our defined tunic in, we use our duck bill scissors here. You can use any scissors you want. I find I, I I do less damage with these. They help keep the fabric away. And you can also kind of just kind of cut from the other side too. Because I have cut through the fabric, so I'm really getting where I'm kind of careful with it. So if you find out when you get done, you might have a little, if you have a tiny little pucker here or there, as long as it's not a big pucker, you're going to find, whoops, when you get rid of this, excess uh, stabilizer that it's nice, it's soft, it's not heavy, and so there's your design. So, um, so essentially, oh, another thing too, when you're um, putting it in the hoop, I can show you another thing here. Oops, I've got to get this stopped. Yeah. Okay, so... Well, let's, let's show one more stabilizer real quick. It's kind of cool because you're wondering, okay, I have something too small, I can't hoop it. And you can't, because you can't hoop velvet, you can't hoop corduroy. And sometimes, say, you want to do a jean pocket jean. You take the pocket off the jean, you invert it, and you sew it back on. So we have a thing called Perfect Stick. And it comes in a roll. And it's got the suitable on the back, and it's got paper on the front. So we just take and we just hoop this with the paper side up. It doesn't matter where we put it because we don't care about this being centered. I didn't lose my screw in the shoe. Okay. All right. We don't care about a little, if it's got a little curl there because that's all going to go away when we get done. Okay. So now we need to find the center of this. So I take a ruler. I lay it on both my marks. And I make a little mark. Oops, I got to take this off first. Hang on a second, guys. I screwed up here. I forgot to take this off. So you need to score this. I usually have a pen, but I forgot the pen. Because so, you want to just lightly go around it. Score the paper. There we go. Okay. And we peel this off. And when we peel this paper off, that leaves us with a sticky that we can put our, our project on that we're doing. Our pocket, our corduroy, our velvet, whatever. So it's not going to damage our fabric. Okay. Now we go and we measure to find the center. So, because it's sticky, so we're going to do things a little differently. So we go here. We're going to make a little line there. We come to here and here and make a little line there. Okay. So that's our center. So then we take our piece of fabric and we just got kind of a little sample piece here. And just kind of fold it so you get the quarter to figure out where the center is. 
Okay, so there's my center. So then I take and I lay it on here with it folded and that one fold right there in the center. Oops, hang on a second here. Here's a backwards. There we go. Okay. So we lay it there. So there's our center folded in half. There's our center going that direction. Then we move this up. And now, now it's perfectly centered. And then we would take it to our machine. We embroider it. When we're done, we do the same thing. We pull it out of the hoop, cut this away, and we're good to go. Now this is a this comes in two kinds. There's a tear away, which is what I use most of the time, because when you get done after you cut it away, if you can take a spray water on it, let it sit about ten minutes, and it'll kind of just the rest of it goes away. Or you can just leave it on there, the little itty bitty bit you have left, and throw it in the washer, and it's gone. So. I just cut the major part away and don't worry about the rest because it's going to go away. But anyway, that's how you do small objects and puppets, which is kind of cool. Um, let's see, what else? Oh, needles. I have found when I'm doing it with needles because the thread I'm using, this is a polyester and it will heat up as it's going through the needle eyes. So um, I use the Floriani thread, which is on the spool over here, and it has a sheen to it. So it kind of makes it shine a little bit. Anyway, the needle I use, I use the Floriani needles because they're chrome and they will not heat up as the thread's going through them. I use an embroidery 9014 or a top stitch 9014. Um, that helps reduce the friction in them. And then the bobbin thread, we use kind of a lingerie thread. It's a 60 weight and I just use white on everything because um, as you notice here on our design, the white doesn't really show. See, all, all, you're, all you really see is the blue, and nobody's going to look at the back anyway. So, anyway, so you want, definitely want to use a 60 weight in your machine, otherwise you're going to get too many stitches to your heart for the needle to keep penetrating, especially if you have a really thick uh, embroidery design. Um, let's see, I think that kind of uh, covers pretty much everything that we're going to talk about is all the products we did talk about we do have here at the electric hospital so if you would like to purchase this just let us know come on in if you have any questions um just let us know we'll try and help you hopefully in another next month we're going to do a little bit more advanced embroidery we're going to try and use the applique um using the acrylic go with the embroidery um do maybe some lace freestanding lace with the embroidery um, just kind of let us know what you would like to see, and we'll be glad to uh, do a video for you. Thank you, and have a good day.